Christmas and welcome to the tabernacle. Oh, how delighted we are today to join you on this Christmas day to celebrate and to worship our God. And so as we come today, man, woman, boy, and girl, from all parts of the world, we come to adore our God. So we make a plea to the whole world, oh, come, let us adore our God.
little song we're going to minister this morning. As I was a little kid growing up, the song was recorded by Willie Neal Johnson and the Gospel Keynotes, which was remade over by the Mississippi Mass Choir, choir with uh, uh, Willie Neal Johnson again when he was alive. The song is called, Had It Not Been For Love, There'll Be No Christmas Today. Could you look at a family member if you're in the room and say, Had It Not Been For Love, There Would Be No Christmas Today.
Praise the Lord, everybody. We have a special treat on you for you this morning. On this Christmas Day, we have our own brother Dave Isidore on the saxophone who will perform for us O Holy Night.
you are sitting in your living room, in your bedroom, or in your man cave, where, wherever you are. Indeed, there is no one like our God. I want to share just for a few moments. We've been looking at the text of Advent and the season of Christmas over and over again. But Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 33, are words of a story that we have heard over and over again. The text will be on the monitors, and I ask you to read along with me as we share the words of this text together. And it reads, in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do, do not be afraid. Mary, you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you for the season of Christmas tide. In the name of your son, we pray. Amen. The musicians just continue to play softly. Let me just share a few words with you based on this text. If anyone tells you that they have God figured out, acknowledge their presence, but do not listen. No one has God figured out. God is vast. Many times when you think God is subtracting, God is adding. Many times when you think God is against you, God is actually with you. Many times when you think you're on your way down, you're actually on your way up. No one has God figured out. We know God loves us. We know God cares for us. But to sit down and write a dissertation on God is impossible. As a matter of fact, this text reminds us of the uniqueness, the unusual uh, activities of God. This text reminds us that God shows up in unusual places. The text says that God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth. I mean, I'm from a small town, Beatrice, Alabama, just this side of Tunnel Springs, the other side of Peterman, over here from Natchez, and over here from Riley Crossing. I know small places. I know the whole idea of small places. I understand that many times when we are from small places, we select the larger place. We may be from Shibuta, Mississippi, but we say we are from Jackson. I know how it is. Uh, when we want to be from big places because big places have influence they have name they have recognition but God shows up in unusual places in emergency room in intensive care ward at a funeral at the dying bed of someone with AIDS not, not just under the Christmas tree though that's a blessing but God shows up in unusual places like Nazareth, just a small, unheard, unknown of town. Nobody special there has some biblical significance, but it's not a big uh, metropolis. I want to remind you this Christmas, maybe for some reason you just don't feel like you're in the location, emotionally, socially, spiritually, where you want to be. I want to let you know that God shows up in unusual places places but not only does God show up in unusual places but God selects unusual people a little peasant girl 
not the descendant of royalty, not some well-known name, not someone who has won the Miss Nazareth pageant, not someone who is uh, articulate with multiple degrees, not someone with some professional pedigree, but he shows up to this little peasant girl who would become an unwed mother who would have a baby without being married. She didn't bear the names of the prophets. She didn't even bear the name of a male that was dominant in her day. Her name was Mary. She's unheard of. If it had not been for the birth of Jesus, we would not know anything about her. But that's what God does. God selects unusual people. So as you guard yourself against everybody else and you talk about the gifts they have, you talk about the money they have, you talk about the degrees they have, you talk about the income and the jobs and the homes and the automobiles, but never forget of your own uniqueness, that you are here because you are God's ideal. God has created you so to be here and God at any moment in time can select you to do a great work, whatever that work might be. Christmas reminds us that God shows up in unusual places to select unusual people to do unusual things. God could have sent God's son in a way God chose, but God chose a little peasant girl from a little town called Nazareth to take the sunum bunum, the all of God there is, and reduce it to human form. That's the kind of God that, that we have, who would take you <laughs> and let you cook a cake that would change somebody's life, that would take you and let you sing a song that would change somebody's life, that would take you and allow your conversation to be inspiration to somebody else. God takes all of God's self and reduces it to human form. Th those who know me know I like Kit Kat bars. Oh, yes, I do. I love a good Kit Kat. If I got to take a long trip, don't give me coffee. Give me a Kit Kat. If I have to preach, don't just come pray for me, but bring a Kit Kat. I'll eat it. I'll eat it. I love Kit Kat. But somewhere in this world, somewhere in some factory, there's a big vat, a big container with nothing but Kit Kat ingredients. Now, as much as I love Kit Kat, you just can't take me and throw me in that vat and expect me to be happy. That would be too much. But somewhere on an assembly line, those, those ingredients have to be cut down in small portions just to make a Kit Kat pack enough for me to consume. You see, that's too much of God for all of us to consume. So what God did in Jesus was to cut it down small enough so that we could take that part of it. Oh, so that's why we say, oh, come, let us adore. That's the word, wherever you are, you ought to be singing it. Come, let us adore.
listen, here's what I want you to do. Because we have the kind of a God who shows up in unusual places to select unusual people to do unusual things. Maybe somebody didn't tune in this morning or this afternoon for our worship service. So here's what I need you to do. I need you to go tell it over, around, and beyond the mountain that Christ, our King, our Savior, is born. Come on, Reverend, take us out. I said, go tell it over the mountain.